All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? The topic of today's discussion is going to be the DCDU, or in other words, the Data Link Control and Display Unit. So before we get started, as always, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, that kind of good stuff. It just helps me out and helps uh, keep the channel rolling forward and hopefully uh, exciting and engaging for everybody, myself included. So uh, thanks for doing that if you haven't done so already. We'll go ahead and jump into the topic of discussion, as I said, for today, and that is going to be this area on the flight deck here. Um, now, uh, right off the bat, I'll, I'll tell you something about the, the fleet of aircraft that I operate. Um, not all of our airplanes have this. So you might you know, poke your head up inside of a, an A320 flight deck at one point in time, and you would see actually an absence of this little area on the panel there. Um, but you know, one thing uh, to be said along those lines is that you know, a lot of what I'm going to talk about today, and certainly this little DCDU, it's kind of the, the future of where our air traffic control communications are going. And I think at some point in time, you know, the idea is that you'll see these boxes in every single airplane that's flying around out there, uh, at least at the airline level, and you know, for corporate jets and all this kind of stuff, you know, these, these folks that are um, real heavy users of the system. Uh, this will be you know, kind of the norm at some point in time. So. Uh, with that being said, um, I've got a, a photo from one of our flight decks here, and uh, the, the areas that I'm talking about today is just, you know, this, this guy here and this guy here, two identical uh, pieces of equipment in the airplane, of course, one for the, the captain's side, one for the first officer's side. They both do, you know, the exact same thing. They both mimic and mirror uh, what's going on on the other person's screen, so it's just kind of, you know, a, a, an easier thing to reach, let's say, uh, and of course, a redundant thing to have two of them up there in the flight deck. So. You know, first of all, you know, let's let's talk about this box specifically. You know, what is it there for? And it's it's there to specifically serve as the interfacing unit for the CPDLC operation. So controller, pilot, data link connection or, or communications rather, CPDLC. You've probably heard this term before. Uh, go ahead and Google it if you want. You know, there's all kinds of data out there and information if you want to get real specific and you know dial down into you know all the intricate details about it. It's kind of more of <laughs> More in depth than what I'm going to cover with you guys today, just you know the, the basic usability and the buttons and all that kind of stuff. But um, as I said, CPDLC, and that that of course is the next gen um, of what ATC communications are going to become. So at some point in time, um, you know there there will be less and less voice communications happening over the airwaves, and you can kind of think about this system in specific. It's kind of like text text messaging, if you will. Uh, with air traffic control and you know as you can imagine um, you know there's a lot of benefits that come along with that um, I think from a general standpoint uh, you know consider as we move forward into the future and there's just more and more volume of aircraft that are out there operating um, you know with any system you know there's only so much air time let's say that you know voice communications can be conducted you know on a, any given radio frequency so at some point you know they can cram more air traffic into a given you know amount of airspace, let's say, and, you know, just the, the limitations on the, like I said, the air time, you know, this will, will greatly enhance the capacity of the system, let's say, to have something like this in place. So, you know, of course, um, you know, like I said, enhancements to the volume of the throughput of the air traffic control system. But of course, along with this, you know, we get things um, like a reduction in error uh, or a reduction of error rates, let's say, you know, a lot of times when you're using voice communications, there is, you know, these read back, hear back, you know, errors of omission that occur if you didn't hear something right or, you know, just the general virtue of that fact, um, you can kind of cut down on this if you have this very, you know, this text-based and very exacting and, and finite way of conducting these communications and accepting of clearances and all this kind of stuff. So, like I said, it can kind of cut down on errors uh, in a great way. So those are just, you know, two of the, the things I could tell you right off the, the top of my head here. But um, just a little bit about how we, we use this box. You know, when we get into an airplane and uh, we're setting up the flight deck for, for the day's operation, um, we'll go ahead and log on to the controlling agency. And you know, I can only you know, speak for the operation in the U.S. here, but I, I imagine it's similar you know, every other place in the world that aircraft might be operating. But you know, in the United States here, for conducting uh, domestic operations, we just log on to uh, the KUSA network. Um, if we're going oceanic, you know, the only oceanic flying that I've been able to do at this point is across the Pacific out to Hawaii. So we would log on to Oakland uh, Oceanic, you know, Center, KZAK. Uh, and as I said, you know, th there's, um, you know, v ev many other parts of the world that are kind of slowly starting to use this. So depending on where the airplane is operating, it's, it's like, you know, kind of your way of just logging on to that air traffic control agencies, um, you know, the communications network and, you know, kind of the way that I think about this, I mean, a lot of you, your viewers out there might be a little bit younger than me, but, you know, when I was, uh, you know, kind of growing up, it was really, 
you know, kind of around the advent of the time when the internet really started to catch on. And, you know, we used to have AOL or America Online for you, those of you in the States here, it was one of the very first ISP or internet service providers. Um, and you would log on and it would give you this message, you're online. And it's kind of the, it's funny, the exact same thing that happens, you know, when you go on, on and you, you send the, the notification message through this DCDU and, the, you know, there's a message that comes back and says, okay, now you're connected to the, you know, USA ATC network, for example. So, uh, you can kind of think of it that same way. And, you know, as I touched on a moment ago, that you know, just this whole concept is just like, picture it like you're in a chat room with, with air traffic control, basically, and they just, they know you're there and they know what you're doing and, you know, they know your identification, all this kind of stuff. And they can just two-way directly send uh, communications uh, to your aircraft, exactly. So um, building on that, like I said, you know, the things that we can accomplish through the DCDU here, I mean, we can get air traffic control clearances, we can get reroutes, we can make position reports. Um, there's a variety of other things we can communicate as well, such as if, you know, we're in distress at any point in our flight. Um, there's also a, a free text option that you can kind of, you know, type out exactly, um, you know, some something, you know, uh, random or different that you might need to control to, or excuse me, to, uh, communicate to aircraft control. These are all you know, various types of things that we can, we can do with the system there. So um, hopefully uh, that, uh, that makes uh, sense to you guys. Uh, one, one thing that I will say too, is that um, once you kind of, you know, get the, the chance to use this, I mean, it is really nice to have, and then you'll kind of revert back to these days where you don't have this box in the airplane and you're kind of finding yourself like missing it. And, you know, I can give you one example. I remember one day we were taxiing out at uh, JFK airport. And as you can imagine, this is a very busy taxi operation, leaving a place that's as busy as that. And, you know, they, they wanted to give us this full reroute clearance, you know, something completely different. They wanted us to fly based, you know, as opposed to our original, uh, clearance and flight plan that we had on file. So, I mean, you know, we were doing this, you know, business of trying to conduct this voice communication and trying to write everything down and trying to, you know, get everything, you know, set up to, you know, fly this new clearance they were trying to give us. So you had this huge amount of workload, right, that occurred. And, you know, we got it done. It was just kind of a pain. But then, you know, a week or two later, I'd gone back through there and the same exact thing happened. And we did have one of these DCDU boxes in the airplane that day. And it was just such a night and day comparison of, of being out there on a day like, like that, where, we were already logged on. They sent the reroute, you know, just right through to the uh, DCDU. It all popped up. You could see exactly what route they wanted us to fly. And, and one of the really neat things about, you know, this box in the airplane is you actually, you can uplink um, the clearance, you know, right that they've, you know, that they've issued you into the box here. You can plug it um, or send it right into the, the FMGS here. So you can, you know, in an instant, you can get all the guidance updated in the airplane that ATC wants you to do. And it's just makes it so much easier. And, you know, the same thing could be said, you know, times that I've flown, um, most of the oceanic flying I'd, I'd done, you know, with my carrier, once again, over the Pacific, down to Hawaii, um, we did have this DCDU. Um, but there was a couple days I remember flying where the, the, the thing was MEL, it was broken, and we couldn't use it for whatever reason. And we were having to, you know, kind of do everything the old fashioned way. And that is, you know, get on the, the HF, uh, the, the audio communications and make position reports and do this, all this kind of stuff. And it was just, you know, such a pain. <laughs> you know, to have to go back and do that. And I'm sure there's maybe some old timers that are watching this video. I mean, that was like, you know, what they did every day. And, you know, they probably make fun of me for, you know, being used to the, the new tools that we have. But I, I think even those guys after using this for a while would probably say the same thing. So uh, just like I said, a couple, couple examples there of, of real world things that I can tell you about this box. So um, I'll go ahead and bring up a, another couple slides. This is just straight out of the FCOM and it just kind of shows, um, you know, a little bit about the buttons. I was just going to talk really quickly about those. And of course, I can't simulate every possible thing that you could see on these screens and all, you know, every possible scenario that could be played out. But just very generally speaking, you know, to, to go right down the list, I mean, the buttons are very simple. Uh, on the left hand side here, we have a, a bright and a dim switch. This controls, you know, the brightness of the screen, of course. Uh, there's a message minus and a message plus. It just allows you to scroll through various messages, you know, in the order that they've been received. Um, on, on the bottom side here, on the left and on the right, we have a couple soft keys and, you know, there's, um, you know, one, one more slide I can show you that just kind of, you know, shows some different options that'll pop up, you know, next to these soft keys, you know, depending on what the, the menus want you to do, you can, you know, accept, you can send, you can cancel, you know, all this kind of different stuff with the messages that, you know, kind of as, as you can see here, if we scroll in, you can, you can get an idea of what that might look like. Uh, and then up on the moving up from there, we have, have the page up and the page down. So sometimes you'll get a message that's longer than, you know, just what can be displayed in here. So you just it's just, you know, scrolling up and down 
uh, from whatever that message is. And of course, uh, a print button that just allows it to send it straight to the, the printer on the airplane. And uh, you can keep it for reference. So you can take a, a look at it if you want to, um, you know, get, get the big picture maybe of the message that was sent to you. So uh, that's all I've got for you guys on the DCDU. If you have any questions about that, please leave them down in the comment section. And uh, as always, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we'll talk again real soon.